Greetings, Skyfarer. Welcome to another episode of Sun in the Skies, Cobalt Thorium. And I want to check something up here. Where are those falls? I should check up here, too. And up here. There's at least two locations that we don't know where they are. There should be a transit relay somewhere here. And there should be that place that the uh, that guy wants us to go. up to terror too. What is this? Oh. Seller from Poor Prosper staggers into the bridge, clutching his throat. He appears to be in his distress. Indeed, hair sprouts like invasive weed from every follicle of his body, forcing its way out. That's gross. He to return to Poor Prosper. There's no point in taking him to his destination. His family would want his body returned, probably. Keep the body for study. The settler's exceedingly singular misfortune may prove to be a boon to the fledgling science of interstellar, interstellar pathology. I'm not taking any chances, we're throwing them off. Throw him off the locomotive. His fate was unsettling and decidedly untidy. Uh. Yeah, after seeing what the, the hybris spores did to that ship. I don't know if I really want all these weird things happening on my ship. A lot of them seem like they're infectious. Also, I probably should say that I'm reconsidering hiring those rats. Um, there's like a couple rat crews that I've been avoiding because it will give us villainy. But I am interested in the quests that they might unlock if we chat with them. Alright, this is the Windward Company, Ella Windward Company. We're going to deliver report reports. Oh, only two, huh? Alright, I think we want a couple more ministry stamp permits. Let's get like four.
right. I don't know if we'll repair for just one. So, higher crew. No, we're only down one. Um, let's explore the city. Yes, yes. Okay. So I think we should escort the incautious driver to the family doctor. A silver plaque on the door bearing only a name indicates the address of New Winchester's most exclusive practice. An immediate appointment. While the doctor conducts her examination, the doctor... Let's try that again. While the doctor conducts her examination, the driver asks you to update their old records with the current employment. You take a moment's pleasure in the driver's ridiculous middle name and pass over the field on gender, straightforwardly crossed out. <laughs> uh, their address was last in eyebrow-raising, prestigious New Winchester townhouse. You amend, you amend it to the last name of your locomotive. Okay. Ah, the doctor says, peering at, into the driver's ear. <coughs> a case of verdancy, a fungal colonization of the brain, not uncommon in the reach. You've noticed uncharacteristic impulses. You've noticed uncharacteristic impulses, changes in behavior. This is what I was talking about before. She eyes the driver's sky suit and scars. Uh, the driver nods. Yes. The spores root deeply in the brain. Attempts to extract them have been have had less than satisfactory results. I'm afraid the best prescription is to entertain them. Take them where they want to go to see the things they want to see typically a little travel does the job they'll soon lose interest I don't like the idea of spreading spores all around everywhere but whatever learning about the unconscious driver you are learning more about the unconscious driver and 1000 experience woohoo okay we should probably talk to her again Where are you? There you are. Um, so we already know about the secondment. Converse with the incautious driver. Uh, they've been a little more restless since their appointment. A communion with verdancy. The incautious driver paces back and forth, clicking their tongue must have been the crash. The nature reserve. My father sent me there to take up a, jo a job in a nice quiet place. I always did love the botany. But when they pulled me away from the wreckage, I had new dreams to follow. I thought they were mine. Now, how can I be sure? A new resolve watches over their face. When they turn back, eyes sharp and sparkling with a flicker of em emerald. Either way, I know where I have to go. Old Thomas Well. Give him the wheel, Captain. I have an appointment to keep. The well lies to the south of New Winchester. What? Okay, so this is a third place. Okay. Learning about the unconscious driver. You're learning more about the unconscious driver. Well, then that must be here. But then where are these other two places? We're running out of space for them. Is there something here? I bet there is something there. But we have to run away. Alright, um, hmm. Get rid of that. Let's go in here. We'll investigate the clocks. The clock is next to the courthouse. Uh, where a murderous sort is in the... Do wait. A clock is next to the courthouse. Where a murderous sort is in the dock. Before judge hang all the filthy... Oh. Uh, hang all the filthy something stacks. Uh, they have blood on their clothes and no alibi. Your orological office pocket watch affords you access to the port's primary clock. 
from which others in the area get their time. You unpack your tools to begin. Assorted screwdrivers, brushes, pliers, tweezers, and a small bottle of oil. And a jeweler's loop. Okay. Really? Sabotage is higher. The port has drifted from Albion's standard time. You can correct the time and date, or you can sabotage the clock. You have your reasons and nobody's watching. Or you can leave it as it is. Or the oral is just going to know anyway. Well, we're going to try to do this. Come on, man. Don't, don't fail me this time. What? You suck. Why is it that I constantly fail these? When I have better than 50-50 chance. Alright, whatever. And now the, the strength of the sun is 81. When we left it was like 87? We haven't been here very long. Lost in time. This clock must have been designed by a madman. Though the gears seem to know what they're doing, you can make no sense of it whatsoever. Passersby wonder th uh, where the thirteenth wonder where the thirteenth bond came from. Fortunately, you're not the only orologist here. We've read this before. Let's get out of here. That is really annoying. Let's inquire about the Winchester War. I think that that... No, we should probably read it. I, I don't know if this changed, but it might have. So I'm going to read it. The fortunes of war. Despite this seeming victory, the Windward Company's hold is less secure than it seemed. The New Gazette can confirm the survival of several key figures in the Assembly, including the indirect veteran and Sweet Jane, both of whom have been sighted in Lustrum. Already, there are murmurs of discontent in the far-flung ports of the Reach. Who... Will take, who will not take kindly to any attempts to impose direct rule upon them. Okay, so her political situation. Lay of the land. The Windward, the Windward Company is keen to consolidate their recent victory over the Assembly. The Assembly has, fre has fled New Winchester and are rumored to be licking their wounds at Lustrum. As for coming, the parsimonious chairman. Speaking from the ruins of Victory Hall, merely smiled. One's reputation. The opinion columnist, who is notorious tackety sympathies, makes acid tongue references to lapdog captains of London, of which you presume you are one. The Winward Company is not named in the paper without corresponding mention of yourself. Really? Company officers speak frequently and highly of you. Sweet. Get out of there. Uh, guess we want to do this. All right, ambition. The stars are dying. The seasoned captains, the plucky baroness, the bedeviled diadect, the mass citizen, and spatch cocker, spatch cocker Meg. My God, that's difficult. This is a tongue twister. Have been assisting the staunch practitioner with her investigations into the fate of the stars. But your friend has disappeared, and a mysterious fire claimed her lodgings and research. Your attempts to find uh, has, your attempts to find her have reached a dead end. By continuing her research, you might have learned what happened. Um, so, we can part ways with Meg. Uh, she's been even surlier than usual during the return journey. Last night she knocked tentat tentatively on your cabin door. New cause. She sat on your desk, fiddling with her pouch of tobacco. Look, I hunt monsters, but I can't hunt a living fire that call that crawls through my thoughts. And I don't know about you, but I done stuff I can't afford to have written on the outside of me. Okay. She she fell silent for a time. 
Here's what I can do, though. I can find our girl before the fire that follows does. I'm going to track her down. If I catch a whiff, I'll get a message to you. She shook your hand. Good flying with you. Meg will turn her efforts towards finding your friend. Meg has departed. You've gained 2,000 experience. Oh, we're getting a lot of experience all at once here. Let's deliver the bathosphere next. It has been constructed to her precise specifications. Well diving. She examines it critically and minutely, uh, checking every bolt, panel, and plate. Who's she in this case? The, the Baroness? It's good work, she announces, eventually. Just as well, I suppose. Is it your imagination, or has she paled? Would she tell you what the bathosphere is for? My investigations suggest that the reigns of the green regent, that is, the reach's son, are an old Tom's well. We're going to have to go down there. She brushes at her skirts. It's quite a journey, of course. Whenever you're ready, I'll be there. All right. Boom. All right, I have no idea where Pan is, so we're not going to do that one yet. Blue Kingdom. We're definitely not ready for that. So I think we're going to... Okay, so here are our... Here are our options. Agree to transport the Diadect on a research trip. Was convinced a primary source, the Roll Vash. I believe it will shed light on the friction between the con... between the conjunctions. There's a library in the Blue Kingdom at the Forge of Souls. Or it can convey the Baroness and her bathosphere to Old Tom as well. Ready when you are. My engine's undergoing repairs, I'm afraid. I ran into a curator near Lustrum. And it made rather a mess of her. So that thing down there was a curator. Interesting. Or we could convey the mass citizen to Pan. Perhaps we could take your engine. I'm not universally admired in Pan. And I may need to keep my head down. Or we could attend to other matters. I think we're going to do the old Tom's well. All aboard! She oversees your crew as they wrangle the equipment aboard. Her usual flippancy is frayed. And she hurries towards the check... Wait. And she hurries forward to check every bump or scrape on the bathosphere. Old Tom's well lies to the south of New Winchester. Yes. Carried the Baroness and her bathosphere... The old Tom's well. Old Tom's well. The well lies to the south of New Winchester. Pucky Baroness is aboard. All right. You return to the streets. A shrill whistle of pipes overhead. A locomotive steams over the rooftops. Away from the tangle, tangles of celestial ogre overgrowths that surround New Winchester. Is there anything else to do here? Hire. Repair. Oh. Stars are dying. Close city, we did that once. Word for Avon. Hours for the Circus Ringmaster. Bronzewood. How much Bronzewood do they need? Five. We have one for seeds. But we're not going to Port Avon anytime soon.
Um, we can sell these uh, stained glass windows, though. Oh, what happened to our money? Oh, we bought the big cannon. That's right. All right, I think we should probably get moving here. I don't think there's anything else to do. Um, we could talk to our people. Okay, we'll look at it on the clay conductor. He was out of sorts when you last spoke. Distraction. The clay conductor is carrying out his duties uh, with drive, if not success. You are complaining of excessive grumpiness. You find him in his cabin. The conductor offers a brief apology and nothing further. Sorry, Captain. I'm just not in the mood for conversation. Close the door after you. Give the clay conductor a little tap. Okay. Little more time it is. Um, who else? Did we we talk to her? They've only been more restless since their appointment. That's right, old Tom's well. Well, it seems like there's a lot of people who want to go there. Now it sounds like we're gonna have to go by Carillon anyway. So we're gonna go to Old Tom's Well or search for Old Tom's Well via Carilla. I'm gonna drink some coffee. Driving one handed. Actually, what's the shoot button? I usually just shoot with the mouse. All right, fuel. Study. Let's study it. Vision of heaven. Okay. I was gonna just squeeze by that. Don't need to cut so close. Sounds like going. I don't think they understand it. Atlan, whatever that is. Atlan.
right. This is interesting. An overgrown shrine. We didn't have this before. Or maybe we did. An overgrown shrine. The path leads you to a broken statue, seemingly ignored by the devils of, Kare of Karelin, except for whoever placed the freshly lit candles at its feet. We have seen this before. I'm not gonna try to. I'm not gonna try to set the burrower below. Let's contemplate. Okay. Um. Go to the foyer. Report. Report. Best thing to do first. That's right. We had something we wanted to do with um, inconvenient aunt. Attend a candle at Soiri. I don't know if that is Soiri. But the inconvenient aunt. She insisted it'll do you good. Come on, she says. Fierce gleam behind her spectacle. Your aunt, chattering constantly, guides you through the ash gray stone chambers of Carillon. Eventually, you reach a little door in one of the less traveled back ways. Your aunt knocks thrice. The door swings open. A severe, scarred old woman peers out. Bunty! Your aunt cries happily. After a brief introduction, Bunty offer, uh, ushers you inside. You emerge into a room with a high, mirrored ceiling. Its dark, paneled walls are illuminated by dripping crimson candles. Uh, revolutionaries consort with ministry auditors. Devils drink with bright-eyed minist ministers of the new sequence. A famous taxi general is highly occupied with a distinguished admiral. What she brought you to? So we could look for our aunt. She's disappeared into the crowd. This does not bode well. Or we could mingle. It's a party. Besides, your aunt can look for herself. Uh, I like this. You duck between a pair of drunken lords toasting their family feud and follow the sound of boiled sweets being crunched. You are led deep into the bowels of the chamber. Your aunt is shamelessly eavesdropping a conversation at the foot of a staircase. Her expression is aghast. You make out the words The St. Dustin's Rendezvous The Company of Four. Before your aunt notices you, let's get out of here. She says, hurrying you away. I have no idea what that means. The St. Dustin's Rendezvous uh, Rendezvous The Company of Four. We're all done there. That was short. Where where is the what is this? We didn't have all these before, did we? Yeah, I hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um. Let's go to the glass lit terrace. I think we freed the person from here already. Let's go to. Let's go to the bell garden. See if our squiddy or what do they call it? 
Here's your fermented soul. So the squiddy character. Let's let's bring that up. A rubbery penitent. I love that. A rubbery penitent. They must have been in the the checkerboard then. Here it is. Consider the rubbery man. He stands at the ledge of the board. At the edge of the board, ignored by the players. Uh, no one has dressed him for the chess game or let him into the board. The evaluation of the rubbery man. Uh, what would such a person need? Perhaps understanding cut with ambition. Transferred. Enlightenment for a start. Conversation for a chaser. He consumes both. Tentacles are involved. <laughs> and the twitching of excessively mobile... What would you call those? Lips? But then... What a transformation. His features smooth and flatten. His tentacles retract. From a distance, one might take him for a human gentleman with an especially prominent brow. He assesses you. Then, no thanks, no comment. Not even a wave from a tentacle. Wouldn't he great? He takes up someone's freshly discarded uh, crozier as a bishop he joins the game and play we have 500 new experience woohoo new vision of heavens we've lost our penance enlightenment we've lost our penance's shift in perspective hmm So our soul is no longer curdled. Our soul is no longer lightless. I have to do this check again, probably to get into the bell tower. I knew that one of these days we'd fail that. The list. Purification according to the devil's um, is a matter assigned by lot daily changed. Some patients must wash in salt water, some in fresh. Some must burn their old clothes. I think we've read this before. Not fermented. It's like all that stuff is done. So I don't think we've really done anything with the stunted grove. The center of Carillon, half height grove, black thorn bushes. And its ordeal can be gained here. There's no real gate. But not much of a wall either. There's only, it's only a low stone barrier. Perhaps a foot tall. Easy to step over. We can try to cure our cold so soul. The difference to love can be corrected, but not easily. What is our current status on these? We can visit the Garden of Insatiable Roses. Only penitents with stained souls may visit the Garden of Insatiable Roses. Penance excess can be gained here. We need a stained soul to be amended. Or we could go to the Sand Garden. It descends to a tunnel carved over the mouth of the tunnel are symbols of death. A skull, a flail, 
fly on its back. Alright. Let's just go in order, I guess. Impenance of ordeal. Struggle towards proper feeling. A lady avoids human company as much as possible, keeps alone, and has very little tolerance for even the cold-blooded animals. The devils disapprove. To repair these defects, she is bound face down to a huge block of ice. Supervising devilus makes notes. As for your punishment, this is not bear speaking of. The experience leaves your throat parched. That's not a great chance. Alright. A very charming young woman considers a cat a nuisance. In order to correct these flaws, she's having tea with the supervising devil and a penitent from the terrace of the glass statues. None of them appears to be enjoying the experience, least of all the devil. Try to allow yourself to feel some emotion, prompts the supervising devilist. Then the second part is um, something we've already read. Oh, wow. A handsome man never gives gifts, for the penance is so good he has been shackled at one side of the garden on the grounds of being too dangerous. Perhaps a memory from childhood will help you warm up, the supervising devil suggests. This is so morally dubious, like all this stuff. Cure your cold soul. The difference to love can be corrected, but not easily. Devils of Kirillin claim to be experts in assessment and improvement of the soul. They would describe yours as tantalizingly opaque and rich with personality. I like tantalizingly opaque. I suppose. So we gained 500 experience, one vision of the sky. Or four visions of the sky, one vision of the heavens. So that's that, that's that. Now we're down to Insatiable Roses, Sand Garden, and the Glass Statues. Hmm. The path runs around... Uh, the path runs around the side of Carillon, to an area that cannot be seen at all from the center. It's a narrow, unassuming path, almost overgrown. The ground underfoot is soft earth. Explore the undergrowth as you go. Curiosity is what brought you here. It will lead the footprints. Who has come here before you? You could identify that scent lingers in the air, mingled with the rose scents and the smoke. I'll just go in order. You lift a side of canopy of leaves alongside the path. Underneath, white maggots are eating a sigil of warding into a fallen peach. Hmm. That's it. By the fence, there's a, a composting pile. Thousands of worms are reducing to mulch a heap of unacceptable book matter. Most of the books were conf confiscated from penitents. Now and then, the compost catches fire, and a supervising devil has to put it out. But this fertilizer explains the aggression of the plants that grow here. So here we could gain a penance of excess. Those who cross boundaries too often are taught here. Those limits have meaning. Already, oof. That's gonna be rough. We can approach the hellish penitent. He's not participating in a picnic. 
We can return to the center of Carillon. No one will mind if you go. They're all distracted with other things. Or you could cure your stained soul. Perhaps you've looked into topics you... Wait, perhaps you sh you've looked into topics you should not have. Perhaps your soul has been consumed and spat out again by an unspeakable beast. Hmm... At the center of the garden is a picnic ba uh, banquet. There's too much frosting on the cakes, too much oil on the salads. Several of the penitents sit glumly eating. With your, uh, with only their no their clothes as napkins, the devil sits among them, eating treacle from a jar. Hmm. That's what she's doing here. She's paying a price on her on her own behalf, or could leave her to her picnic. L. Supposedly, says the devilist between bites, the souls of devils are incapable of being refined. You make some adjustments, improve here and there, and then a death or two later a death or two later, and all the work is gone. But I'm determined. Humans can be improved. So can I. Assisting a hellish penitent, you are making deals with the persistent devilist. to do here. Hmm. Starting to get tired again. Just really losing my focus. Rereading the same line over and over again. Ugh. Not gonna have another energy drink this late. Should probably wrap it up. Um, let's see what else is here. So that was what? Was that the Garden of Insatiable Roses? I think it was. You could visit the Sand Garden. It sends into a tunnel. Curved. Over the mouth of the tunnel are the symbols of death, a skull, a flail, fly on its back. No, uh, well, yeah, we should probably go in there and just see what's what happens. All right, so we went into the sand garden, and the air is cold. Sand crunches underfoot. We can embrace the danger. You've come this way because of the darkness, not in spite of it. You will not be deterred. Not by fear, not by cold, not by hesitation or anxiety. You've chosen a way forward, that is all. Or you are numb. You feel nothing. All the ordinary sensation is left long ago. I embrace danger. You put a foot wrong and are thrown to your knees. Something cuts the palm of your right hand. Something that feels like a shard of glass. You pick it out before you go on. Well, that didn't seem like the right thing to do. Man, I am so lost. Approach the pen as an ape, I guess. Hmm. 
No, I think we I think we should wrap it up here. So in the next episode, um, we'll go through all this stuff. Like I, I feel like this episode's gonna get way too long if we just keep going. So I'll wrap it up here, and in the next episode, hopefully I'll be be more rested too, and we'll try to crunch through all this stuff, and then we'll go and try to find that extinguished sun of the south. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you have, please like. Maybe comment, maybe subscribe. I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.